away, you swan! <laughs> Leave, or I'll make you bleed! These all came from the swamps. Could be totem contraband. Oh, help me! Do not fight the calling! <laughs> Blood! I beg of you, hold for day! Relive your blood! Oh, 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 no, no, it, it can't be. It can't end like this. Uh, again, this nightmare haunts me. It won't let me forget. Morning, Holmes. Looks like a typical London day. Fog in the morning, fog in the afternoon, ah, and here's a surprise, fog in the evening. Good morning, Watson. Can you imagine? I have been at it since 5am, and I scarcely think my list of patients for the day has even been touched. What is more insufferable, I haven't even had a moment with the morning paper. They say the minister will assuredly... Holmes! Whatever is the matter, you haven't heard a word I have said. It is the tedium, my dear Watson. Life is ordinary, the papers are lifeless. Any hint of audacity, and dare I say, romance has vanished from the criminal world. Holmes, it is only temporary. You know perfectly well that sooner or later an exceptional incident will occur in London or thereabout which cannot rest till the talents of Sherlock Holmes are called into play. Then it will be up to your agile wit to set things right, which should satisfy your constant need for mental gymnastics. I hope the heavens hear your words, Watson. I hope they do indeed. Well, I must take my leave, Holmes. I have an appointment with a rather odious man, Captain Stenick. He is apparently in a state with near tachycardia due to some problem involving his manservant. Why don't you get out for a brisk walk, Holmes? Perhaps buy a newspaper or visit that fellow, Barnes, over on Glentworth Street. You might remember him, the bookseller. He has some new volumes of the particular sort that should occupy your mind for a time.
I have no reason to go there. The strand! Boy, the strand! 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 Boy, the strand! So, my young friend, what is the news? Nothing of interest for the great detective, sir. Those old stuffed shirts ate up half of London at their big scientific to do, and some Candice Navia princess is driving the locals wild with curiosity. A Scandinavian royal is in London? If you and the lads can look sharp and find out more about her visit, there will be some coin for your pockets. Why no, Mr. Holmes? If there's aught to be found, the irregulars will have it. I'll send the words out to the lads. It is necessary to keep my informants in fighting form. Pardon me, I'm looking for the Barnes Bookshop. Would you happen to know it? I know the place, know it well, Mr. Holmes. The bookshop is on Glentworth Street. Take your first right and then the next left and you'll find it straight away. My respect, Miss Fleming. Good day, Mr. Holmes. Good morning, Mr. Holmes. How are you? I have some new novels that should interest you. A nice illustrated volume on fish and a collection of legends on piracy. They must be here somewhere. Appears to be a trace of shoe leather. Did somebody fall here? A book about sea fauna. Ah, the pirate's book. I will take them. Thank you, and goodbye, Mr. Holmes. Those flowers need watering. By the way, Barnes, before some misfortune befalls you, I am quite certain Miss Fleming, the flower saleswoman, would prefer chocolates to a fractured bone. But how could you know that? Indeed, even she, I mean, I told no one about this. Other than Dr. Watson, that is. Oh, I see now how it goes. Not at all. Watson would never reveal a confidential matter of professional trust. He did, however, mention your fine shop and your novelties. Knowing his views on classical literature, I doubt there would be any inducements to enter your shop unless it was professional business. What would trouble a man of your age and position, sufficient to require the services of a doctor? I noticed trace of shoe leather on the stepladder and deduced that you no doubt lost your balance, fell and likely suffered a nasty sprain. As for the flowers, you deliberately let them die and left this sad display open to the public, hoping, no doubt, that their supplier would notice and take great efforts to come and replace them. 
Also, I know Miss Fleming to be a statuesque woman, so typical of the Scandinavians. I noted that you would likely wear shoes with a high heel, so that you and Miss Fleming, should she arrive, see more eye to eye. Unfortunately, climbing about on ladders and the like in such shoes is a risky business, isn't it? Indeed, it is, Mr. Holmes. Believe me, Barnes, try chocolates next time. And besides, it requires a bit more than well-heeled shoes to find a proper soulmate. Don't you agree? Ah, uh, Miss Fleming. Ah, it's good that I found you, Holmes. As I told you this morning, I visited Captain Stenick. Although his symptoms are not serious, the circumstances which caused his palpitations are quite peculiar. Perhaps you can make something of it. Here is Captain Stenick and Sergeant Rufels. What do you make of this, Holmes? Captain, I understand from Watson you're quite upset. Any man will be the same, and with less provocation. My servant has left in the middle of the night. Damned ungrateful after all I have done for him. To top it off, he knows not one word of English. Finally, if he causes any damage, I will bear the brunt of people's anger and suffer the consequences, as I am the person who brought him to England. How long was he in your employment, and is he accustomed to vanishing in this manner? We returned from Australia more than five months ago now. But to his credit, he never left this house before now. He is afraid of the city, as are many inhabitants from open spaces. Could he have stolen something? Upon my word, no. How much money does he have on his person? Frankly speaking, he didn't have any money. I kept his wages for him, and they are in my safe. In any event, what the deuce would he have a need for money? Who knew that he worked at your home, and had he any contacts here in London? Anyone who deals with me professionally knows Baopa is my personal servant. As for his contacts, they are limited to the delivery men who bring food or other items to my home. What reason could he have to see anyone other than myself? Now then, Sergeant, what is it about, and what elements of the crime do you have documented? Referring to the official report, the following particulars were taken down. A young Maori responding to the name Bayalpa was reported missing by his employer, Mr. Stenick. No one in the surrounding area saw or heard anything relevant to this incident. In truth, we rarely concern ourselves with cases such as this, but the lad speaks not a single word of English, and according to his employer, has considerable strength. Considering the wild customs of his native land, who knows what damage he could cause? You must know, Mr. Holmes, there have been a few similar cases reported recently. The facts are much the same. Immigrants from the poor districts have been reported missing by their families. We expect that some low-class brothel has opened its doors to the local exotics, and, Mr. Holmes, you can imagine how word would spread. Mark my words, with his unique looks and speech, we'll find this boy in no time. I imagine he'll have nothing worse to show than empty pockets and a delighted air. That is a possibility, to be sure. However, I would be most grateful if you could ask your superiors to send me the reports about those similar cases. I rely on you, Ruffles. Watson, continue your search here. I must follow another lead.
the lock was not cracked. Flaxen, yellow in colour. What a peculiar drawing. Hmm, this appears to contain some measure of opium. I shall analyse it at Baker Street. Footsteps. Let's see. The size is undoubtedly seven. The shoes are also hard soled. The size is undoubtedly seven. The shoes are also hard soled. Footsteps. Let's see. The right shoe is missing a nail. Yes, there is something here. Footsteps. Let's see. Hmm, how strange. This appears to be a fish scale. I shall have to examine this more thoroughly under the microscope. No reason to go there. This should prove useful. Why are they here? Hmm, it will be necessary for me to examine this more closely at Baker Street. Everything in good time. First, I must find Watson. Come, Watson, we must return to Baker Street. What do you make of this, Mr. Holmes? Mr. Stenick, I wish my news were your servant simply left your employment voluntarily for the service of a more honest man. Unfortunately, I don't have that pleasure. In truth, the news is grim indeed. Your servant was seen in the company of two men yesterday. One of the two is a man of moderate size, very robust and a mature age. His profession, which will be the key element in our investigation of this affair, will be determined by me within few hours. The other is a young Hindi who is tall and only recently arrived in England. There is a darker side to these events. Your man was not with them by choice. Rather, the evidence shows he was kidnapped. At this moment, the reasons behind this villainous act are unknown. But, rest assured, the truth will not elude me for long. Gentlemen, I wish you a good day. Come, Watson, we must hurry. There's a great deal to do and little enough time to spare. 
Holmes, I must protest. You did not spare my client, Captain Stenick. This seems unusually harsh. That may be, Watson, but now what matters more is to know the reasons behind the kidnapping of this young Aboriginal yesterday evening in central London, and more importantly, what has become of him. I must concentrate on a small experiment. I will run to test my theories. Please go to the poor Lovelorn Barnes and ask him if he has something on the Maori nation and its traditions. Also, if you should happen to see the newsboy outside, find out what he knows, and if it has value, give him a coin. And for God's sake, don't be a miser, Watson. A miser? You cost me one of my patients, and you question my level of generosity with your informers? Oh, really, Holmes, sometimes you go too far. According to this monograph, the fish scale appears to be from a perch, a saltwater fish with high commercial and culinary value. Hmm, very interesting. The meatball ignited but failed to burn completely. There are, without a doubt, mustard seeds present, probably in exotic form. What could be the other components, I wonder? Let's see if I can obtain a reaction with the help of my chemicals and apparatus. If I apply heat, strong presence of opium blended with a concentrate of morphine. The remaining elements are a mystery to me. Now it can't be used for anything. Now it can't be used for anything. Let's see if I can obtain a reaction with the help of my chemicals and apparatus. soot mixed with water and given the absence of any salt particulates it must be fresh water I should look from the window and see where Watson is there's a good lad how does it go hello sir my associate Sherlock Holmes said you might have information for him about about, uh, now, what was it? The Princess Gav. He was looking for the scuttlebutt on this here princess what we visiting. Exciting goings on. Her bodyguard went missing the first morning after she got here. Nice job to look after a princess's body, innit, sir? They say he went out on a town having a go with the ladies. 
if you get my meaning. Like as not he was trapped by some gang of toughs, otherwise who'd get the best of him? A proper giant he was by all accounts. Do I get me coins then, sir? Oh, thank you, sir. Obliged, I'm sure. Please, Watson, leave me to my thoughts. I must concentrate. Good day, my dear Barnes. What about your... Tell me, Dr. Watson. Physicians are obliged to keep their patients' confidences, aren't they? Of course. Whatever do you mean? A moment ago, Mr. Holmes came to my shop and seemed very well informed about the details of my recent accident. You and I both know that there is only one person who knew about my condition, correct? Sir, I can assure you... No, please, say nothing. It is so easy to ridicule my despair. But I love her. Can't you understand? I love her. Uh, mm, yes, indeed. Uh, well, uh, in fact, I came here merely to see if you have a book on the Maoris. Over there, on the bottom shelf. Oh, yes. Doctor, farewell. Love is cruel indeed. Oh, yes. Doctor, farewell. Love is cruel indeed. I will take it. <clears throat> Farewell, Barnes. Holmes, what on earth did you say to Barnes to put him in such a state? Not now, Watson, although I'm sure this bit of news is most significant. It must wait. We are piecing together a singular affair. This abduction story is much more complex than it appears. As I noted before, our next move is to locate the place of employment for one of the villains who abducted the young Maori. What part of London would such a man call home? Yes, Watson, there is little room for doubt. Our man is a bargeman who works at the Thames River wharfs. He is more precisely employed to transport and handle fish brought in by various ships. Our next step is obvious. We must find a cab and make haste to the Thames near the warehouses. What do you make of this, Holmes? <laughs> 